Are you interested in the newest features and the latest version of Illustrator? Let's start with my favorite, and I think it might be your favorite too, intertwine objects. Are you familiar with stacking order? Path A can be in front of path B or in back of it, but it can't be both. But what if you want path A to weave in front of path B and then behind it like two interlocking rings? The solution is intertwine objects. Oh. And one quick plug, if you like what you're about to see, I have more at patreon.com slash deeknow, including another video about my second favorite new feature in Illustrator. Hmm, what could it be? In the meantime, let's get started. All right, for starters here, we have seven rings. Notice that. And I'm just gonna check, I want you to see here, in the layers panel, that I have open on screen. I'm gonna twirl open the rings layer. This is one of the beautiful things about Illustrator is you can twirl open layers and see all the objects inside the layer. So notice there is a clear stacking order. Seven rings right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and hide all but the green ring, which is at the back of the stack. This is important, by the way. And then the red rings on top of it, it is on top, all the way on top. Notice on both intersections, it's on top. That's the way things work in Illustrator. Then blue's on top of that and green's on top of that and then purple and orange. I know, I'm treating you like a child, but I just want you to see that the one ring's in front of another as compared with the final version of this artwork in which the rings interlock with each other. I'm gonna twirl open this little guy right here. Again, inside the layers panel, I want you to see that there's still a clear and present stacking order. And yet the green ring isn't back of the red ring. What? No, it isn't. It's in front. What? And then the red ring. Sure. It's in back of the blue ring, right? And so it is in back, but this is, then it's in front. And then we have a yellow ring on top of the blue ring and the red in back of it and simultaneously in front of it. What? That's what's going on with the intertwine feature inside of Illustrator 2023 and moving forward. So, hey, let's check it out. I'm going to go ahead right now at this point and I'm gonna select everything by going to the select menu and choosing all. Sure, that's the suckers route or you can press control A or command A on the Mac to get it over quickly. I do have the bounding box turned on and that's kind of interesting because it's gonna tell us where we are. You're gonna see this is a feature that could use some work. It's a great feature, I'm excited about it, but it is imperfect and I will complain about it in a moment. But for starters, what you do, you should be able to right click, right? Just right click. It's a new feature. So usually Adobe will push the new features. They're, they will be in this shortcut menu right here that you get by right clicking. Where this feature is concerned, at least not yet. It's not, I, if you find a better way, let me know if you find a right click option, but this is the only way I know to do it. You go to the object menu, which is tedious because every command in the software is in this menu. And then you drop down to intertwine, which, you know, good luck finding that. It's right there. And then choose make. Very typical old school illustrator way of working because all these things have little sub menus with the word make in them. I'll go ahead and choose that. And then all of a sudden we're in a totally different mode. I want you to notice that it doesn't look like it's a, a different mode. We're not seeing really much to go with up here at the top of the screen. There's not something, you know, blaring at us. You are now in the intertwine mode, except for notice this, the word intertwine on the far left side of the control panel, little sidebar. If you were trying to do the same thing I'm doing, you may see the big old properties panel up on screen, probably over here covering up the layers panel. I hate that. This panel is so huge. It is four times, about four times the size of the horizontal control panel. And yet it provides very little in a way of additional functionality. We, we notice that almost everything is duplicated. I'm not going to go through all that, but almost everything in the properties panel is duplicated somewhere up here in the very slender, or at least it's uh, short, right? It's short and wide uh, horizontal control panel up at the top of the screen. That's why I, I prefer it so much to the properties panel. If you're not seeing it, a dear friend on a regular basis, go up here to the workspace option and at least, at the very least, switch to Essentials Clana. Classic, that is. You can see that I've got a custom workspace going on, which just means I drag the panels back and forth to my liking. Anyway, you can also see the word intertwine up here at the top of the properties panel, but we don't need it, so I'm gonna hide it. Notice it's huge. I, just, I already said that. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I, I like to call it galumphing, by the way, in case you're curious, which means that it moves, uh, clumsily and with a heavy pace, which it does. It would if it could move by itself. It can't, I'm gonna close it. All right, so here's what you do. Here we are in the intertwine mode. Another hint that we're in the mode 
is none of the tools in the vertical toolbox here, none of them are selected. There is, but we have a special tool. Notice the cursor. It's a little arrow, little white arrow with lasso. That's one way it appears anyway. And so what you want to do, here's how you use it. I'm going to bring up my guides layer right here that contains some guides so I can keep track of what's going on. And notice, no, did that? It did. That swapped me out. Look, I'm no longer in the mode. How can I tell? Because watch up here at the top of the toolbox, the black arrow tool, the selection tool is active. That's so good. That means I'm, I can't, I can't do a darn thing anymore. I can still see I have an intertwined object. So I guess that doesn't do you any good in terms of knowing whether you're in the mode or not. However, notice we see an edit button either up here in the control panel or in the big galumphing properties panel, either way, click on it. And now look, I've got my little white arrow, cute. And I've got a lasso that tells me I'm back in the intertwined mode. The black arrow tool is no longer active. Neither are any of the other tools in the toolbox. Just so you can keep track of what's going on. All right. These little uh, guide squares show me that I put on the guide's layer over there. Those show me where I want to change the overlap. That's what this is about. So I'm just going to clumsily and with a heavy uh, gate or whatever, marquee. Just, you know, the, the, the free form marquee, this region right here. And notice orange is in front of purple, okay? Until I release. Now purple is in front of orange, okay? You got it? All right, now I want to show you some more stuff. Let's say that's, you, you're not comfortable kind of just dragging with that lasso tool because check this one out. Let's say you don't do a good lasso. Let's say you do some mangletoid like that and you release, you're going to get a very bad intersection or overlap. In which case, of course, what you want to do is undo, right? Control Z, Command Z on the Mac. There you go. What happened? Oh, I got a black arrow cursor. Watch the cursors in Illustrator. They tell you the story. And notice also the black arrow tool is selected up here at the top of the toolbox. Which tells me if any tool is selected, that tells you you're no longer in that so-called edit mode. In which case, so undoing takes you out of the mode. Adobe, this is the first of my, <laughs> my little messages to Adobe here. Great feature, I love it. Dream feature, wanted it so long. This should not happen. Undoing should not take you out of the mode. Anyway, click on edit. So you're punished for undoing. Come on, that's not cool. All right, let's say you want to do a really good job of making sure you encircle this area that you want to change the overlap of. Well, then press the shift key. Notice your cursor changes. Press and holding the shift key, you get a tiny little cute white arrow guy. And you get a little kind of dotted marquee, right? And that means you can marquee. So with the shift key down, you can marquee. That gives you more control. All right. Isn't this fun here? Let's say you look at this. You want, I, oh, by the way, yellow is now overlapping purple, where previously yellow was in back of purple. All right, so now you know you want, I, you know, because of the guides. The guides tell the story. Because otherwise, it's like you're kind of just hunting and fishing around. That's why I have the guides in there, because th this is the final artwork. All right, so go back here, and you know you want to, did that switch me out? Switching windows, switching between different open documents. It took me out of that edit mode. Notice the black arrow tools once again selected. I can't, if I try to marquee an area or something like that, that's not going to do any good. And so what you have to do is click on the edit button. Wouldn't it be nice if you right clicked and chose edit? I just, I don't see it. Do you see it? Anyway, it's right up here in the control panel. Click edit. It just, just, it just, if you like this feature, you're going to be clicking the edit button an awful lot. Now, let's say, you know, that blue needs to be in front of purple at this point, And then red needs to be in front of blue because of my little guides, right? So you want to get the work done more quickly, wise guy. And so what you do is you press the shift key and you marquee both regions. See that black rectangle right there. I release and the black rectangle stays on screen and nothing has changed about my overlaps, but ho oh, oh, ho, hey, now I've got highlights because Illustrator is confused. Why is Illustrator confused? Because I didn't marquee two objects, two things that were overlapping each other, one overlapping in another word, another one. In other words, I overlapped three different possible intersections. So Illustrator is like, I'm only going to do one. I'm good for you trying to game the system, but it's not going to work. So choose one. So I'm going to click here and that guy comes to front. And so that didn't, that didn't fix the need for the red to be in front of the blue. So I got to shift marquee it again, like so. 
All right, let's get this work done. Now I'm going to shift marquee this, and then I'm going to shift marquee this. And as a result, green is in back of red, then it's in front of red, and then red is in front of yellow, that's yellow, and then in back, and then in front of blue, and then in back, and so forth. They're all interlocking, if you will, or if you prefer. I mean, there's so many different ways. So many different synonyms, right? Weave, they're weaving each other, if you like, or they're intertwined. I would put a D on the end of that, but whatever. Anyway, it's an intertwined object. Now, let's say you actually want to reposition the rings with respect to each other. That's not, we're still in that edit mode, by the way. And you can see, because we have the cute little white arrow, and we got a lasso in this case because I released the shift key, and none of the tools is selected. That's all you got to go on. That's all the visual communication illustrator has for you, except for the bounding box is missing. Notice that. So I would like to get out. Now I want to get out of this mode. Darn it. And I don't want to have to undo because I'm very pleasantly happy with what I see. I it, Normally you would press the escape key. Adobe, um, normally you would press the escape key. Every other thing in the software you press the escape key. This you don't. How do you get out? Well, you select a different tool. Any tool will do. Or uh, the black arrow tool, V, because it's a downward facing arrow. So you just press the V key. No other, you're not command V or anything like that, or control V or anything, just V. Okay, takes you out. Now that tool is selected and we are no longer editing objects and you can see the bounding box if you have that turned on and so forth. All right, let's turn off the guides layer so that we can focus on the work. This is, this is the real editing, right? I wanna move one of the rings. I wanna move the orange ring and keep it in back of the purple ring, for example. So what you do in this case is you enter the isolation mode, that's what I was waiting for you to say. You enter the isolation mode by double clicking on any one of these rings and now you are in the intertwine, in this case, isolation mode. How do you know? Well, it's really obvious. Look at this. We've got this gray bar up here. The background is dimmed. So that gradient background is dimmed and, and we can still kind of see it. But at the word intertwine and it shows us that it's inside the ring. So it's like we're nested inside of that rings layer. And we can see in the layers panel that all we're seeing is the intertwine object. We've got so much visual communication in this because this was designed earlier, a long time ago, this feature. But anyway, so now what you do is you just click on the orange ring. Okay, now look how I can just drag it up and down like crazy. <gasps> Miracles. But I can't drag it back and forth very much. Notice, oops, it's coming out there. And then it's, at some point, yeah, it's just going to come out on the, ooh, look, we don't, we just have a very narrow channel of messing things up. And now we're messing up the interaction with the, the yellow ring right there. And that's a function of, this is the area of overlap. This is the area of intertwine, if you will, that Illustrator is set aside for this particular object. So you can't do that. And so, but you can, like if you mess up like so, then you just know, okay, I can't go that way. I can go down this way though, if I want to. And then I can click on this object and I can drag it. Nope, can't drag it this way. Nope, can't drag it this way. Nope. You know what? I'm not gonna move the purple ring. <laughs> that's, that's the moral of that story. Actually, what the heck there? I gotta move it back up. So just keep an eye on things. You know, because things can go wrong. And so I'm going to move the yellow ring down. That seems to work okay. And the blue ring, no, 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 no. Blue ring's going to stay where it is. Maybe the red ring? Well, I think I'm limiting my choices at this point in time because I've done so much movement. But I can drag this guy down. Not over this way because he goes to the back of everybody. Notice that. And there's this area right there. Do you see it? You see it. All right. I'm going to move this back over here. All right. So, you know, obviously... uh well, you know, I've made a mess of things, but let's say you want to get out of this isolation mode. What do you do? You press the escape key. Remember how that works for everything but this new feature? It works for this. So you can escape out. Oh, what did I do right there? I want to I want to move this guy up. Hey, I can still do it because this guy got selected. And actually, I think you can do this stuff with the white arrow tool as well. Let's try it. The direct selection tool, A for arrow, of course. Click on the red ring. Yeah, I can move it around independently. So you don't have to go to the isolation mode if you don't want to, if you feel comfortable with that white arrow. Of course, this is a lot of garbage, all these changes I've made. So you're working in the newest version of Illustrator. Got yourself a history panel, don't you? There it is. What? I look at all these states that say move. They're the bad states. So I'll just go back here to rearrange. And I will restore the good stuff. Actually, if I 
click on layers panel options that'll turn off those guides and then i'll just go ahead and hide that panel isn't that just delightful and i'll click off the objects to deselect them and that's how in our case you create a bunch of interlocking rings using the intertwine objects function imperfect but awesome here inside illustrator 2023 and moving forward thank you so much for watching feel free to like and subscribe what's your favorite new feature in illustrator anything from 2022 counts comment down below oh and check out deeknow.com it takes you to my patreon i'm deke mcclellan this is illustrator now